Well, I'm joined by Dr Giles Wilson, who is CTO for Solution Area TV and Media at Ericsson. Hello Giles. Hello John. Um, now you've been a market leader in encoding for well over 20 years at Ericsson. And it's a very interesting dynamic part of the market now, video compression. So just tell us where you're focused as a company in your compression business right now. You know, I think the core focus that we have is what it's always been, which is in continuing to drive the fundamental compression performance, the, the operating point relationship between quality and bandwidth. Um, there's always a continuous demand to, to get more content on, into the bandwidth and, and drive down costs. Within that, I think we have big focuses at both ends of the spectrum. At the top end, look into the future and applications and use cases like ultra high definition and more immersive TV. Um, but also at the other end of the spectrum with uh, um, ABR over the top type services and encoding for those. Um, we've seen a lot of change there. We're seeing that those over the top services are now not just going to mobile devices and, and computers, they're actually being put on the big screen and the premium content is going there. So we're now looking at things like putting true HD content, 720, progressive 60 onto those OTT services and also trying to drive down uh, the CDN cost by improving the compression performance. Okay, and you've been talking about software-defined solutions and um, how critical they are to the future of video compression. So first of all, tell us what you mean when you talk about software-defined. So what we're talking about there is, is the ability to have large pools of resources, both in hardware and in software, available uh, for doing media processing in an operator environment. Um, and having software layers that allow you to define um, how that actually maps at any given point in time onto the, the media processing that you have to do, um, abstracts away um, the details of the, the implementation and whether it's cloud or software or uh, pure hardware and gives a common operating environment for, for, the, for the operator in order to manage all of that in a much more flexible and dynamic way. Okay, and how important will that be for service providers as we sort of move ahead now into the, well, what we're calling, I suppose, the internet era of TV? I think it's going to be incredibly important. I mean, what the operators need is a lot more agility, okay? They need to be able to bring channels up faster and bring uh, new concepts to market faster. Um, and to do that, they need to be able to move faster with their infrastructure, and it really does enable them to do that. Also, they have a lot more applications that they're trying to operate in the video space. Um, it's not just about traditional linear broadcasting anymore. They have all their on-demand services. They have their over-the-top services. So, that, so it's a complex, uh, a complex area. And to do that, they need a mix of different technologies to achieve it. So hence, we think it, it's extremely important. Okay, and in terms of hardware, I mean, Ericsson are almost unique now in the, the investment that you keep putting into hardware yeah. processing, which suggests you think that's still very relevant. I mean, just tell me what the roadmap is for hardware in this industry. Uh, you know, I think it is absolutely still a vitally important ingredient. Um, the, the thing that hardware gives you is uh, the extreme computational power that you need to do a really effective video processing. Um, when you look forward, what you see are things coming along like uh, 4K resolutions, um, HEVC, which is more mathematically complex. So that need for the processing power is not going away. And you know, that's going to continue to drive us to continue to optimize um, our hardware platform. So we'll be continuing to invest in that. Um, what I would add to that, though, is that there are also benefits of software-based implementations in terms of agility, in terms of the operational environment with data centers running on COTS um, servers. So, you know, they, they have relative strengths. Each works better in different types of applications. I think we're going to need both. Um, so our intention is to keep pushing the boundaries both on the software and on the hardware side, but virtualize it in order to enable those to be used very effectively in the operational environment. Okay, so very much a hybrid story like the rest of the industry now, really. Absolutely. Okay, well, thanks very much for your time, Giles. It was great talking to you again. Thanks, John.